really happy to be here. I have to say I, I learned a lot today about how close to the industries we are with what you do and what we're doing in tolling. Tolling has been like a closed group for so long, and now with all electronic tolling where you can just drive through, it's, it's really changing um, and opening up to other factors. And I'm going to talk a little bit about that today. I actually want to start backwards with a little video clip that I kind of borrowed off the internet from a company I have nothing to do with, and uh, I'll disclaim anything about it. Um, uh, no endorsements, obviously. Uh, but they have a video out there that kind of shows what I think the future will be uh, in tolling and in transportation uh, with what's coming in autonomous and uh, connected vehicle. Sharon? House. 10 minutes via the freeway. Perfect. Low fuel. Would you like to get gas? Let's make it quick. $37 to fill up. Fill up. Okay, rerouting now. Fill up at pump six. I need coffee. Take it to the nearest coffee shop. There's a coffee shop nearby. Order four large coffees. Okay, your total is $12. Pay now. <laughs> hey. Ooh, where are we gonna park? Find available parking. There's a garage nearby. Spot 268 is available. Redeem points for VIP passes. So as you can see, you know, the toll roads of the past, and I'll have a couple of slides here in a second, are changing. You know, I remember the days when I was a kid, I'm gonna date myself, where up in Pennsylvania, we get on the Pennsylvania Turnpike to go through a collector's toll booth and talk to them and go out to Howard Johnson's for an ice cream and come back. Um, no longer, everybody wants to get there fast. Everybody needs to get there right away. So things are transitioning. We're transitioning in the way that uh, roads are actually put together and, and paid for. You know, we see uh, New York City is looking at uh, new pricing cord and pricing you know, in order to uh, uh, facilitate payment of the transit system. We're seeing tolling and transit come together. So there's a lot of different changes happening. So we've gone from the days in, in uh, tolling and transportation where we used to have a turnstile and people would pay with a chicken, you know, going through to all electronic toll collection, which people are just driving through. I, I've personally tested the Maryland system at 120 miles an hour, and it works. So, <laughs> um, so it's hard to beat. Uh, you know, the combination of current RFID technology and video technology has really made a big difference. What's happened is our markets are coming, with what you do, are coming closer together. We're starting to see a, a big, uh, transition in tolling. It's, I, I'm seeing companies, I've talked to all the major car companies in the past couple of years, and they're all looking at how to integrate you know, payment systems into their vehicle. And it's not just tolling, as you saw from that video. It's a combination of things. It's uh, you know, fast food, parking. Parking's a much bigger industry than tolling. Um, and, and when this comes up, I'll probably be a little redundant, but um, Tolling itself, you know, is a multi-billion dollar uh, company. So how many people have actually driven on toll road? How many people have a transponder? How many people wave it when they go through and slip in a window? <laughs> um, 
which, you know, it, it could be a problem in reading it. So some of the problems coming up with cars in the, in the future is that, um, you know, metal oxide windows and stuff like the RF. But I really see the, the industry moving to more of a complete mobile payment system that includes, um, you know, cell phone. So in talking to the car manufacturers, I talked to one about six months ago, and they said to me, you know, with autonomous vehicle and connected vehicle, it's just another radio. We already have 20 some radios in our car. And you know, I'm old, so I looked at AM, FM, oh wait, all them little sensors around, they're all radios, right? So it's just another radio. So adding it and hooking it into the info system is easy. It's not that difficult for them. The hard part is what you do. The hard part is managing the transaction. How do you manage that transaction? How do you assure the toll agency or whoever gets their payment? And if it's multiple groups on that same uh, platform, you know, maybe it's, uh, as the video showed, McDonald's and a uh, combination of uh, toll agency and whoever, how do you make sure the payments go in the right direction? Cool. So, you know, transitions are inevitable. As you look at these slides, you know, we've gone from the toll collector to the toll, you know, gantry type stuff, uh, now to all electronic tolling down in the, in the right-hand corner. But where there's um, transition, there's uh, opportunity. Cool. So we've seen the payment systems change too. You know, you're looking at, you know, current technology in the bottom here with cash. Some agencies still use cash and credit cards, which you can still use on the, on uh, most of the transitions. So to um, evolving it to cell phone, there's a person in here that's actually working on a system like that, to you know, integrate it into the car itself, which is, I'll come up with the, the advantages of that in a little bit. And then you have the what other things happen. I've talked to uh, Google or Alphabet and uh, Apple. They're all interested in this market. And then there's the ride share. So they use the toll roads, obviously. And then they'd also be interested in some type of payment system on that side. Let me just mention one thing about how tolling works currently. So most of you have a transponder. You know when you signed up, they took an extra $20 or whatever. And that's a dynamic fee. So the more you use the tolls, the more that fee goes up, the more they keep as a kind of a, to make sure that, that the payment will be made. It's a postpaid account. So, you know, there's about 50 million toll tags out there right now. And if you figure there's a minimum of $20 on each account, which that's low, it's probably more like 40, um, you can do the math. That's how much float the toll agencies are holding currently. So there's a lot of money um, in tolling. A couple years ago, I found at ATI, and um, we had three, two banks do market analysis. And they said, when this stuff happens, you'll be looking at a $50 billion a year market. And I think it's grown since then. So, you know, a lot of things are happening. We talked about the transponder a little bit. Tolling apps getting really hot. You know, whether it's GPS enabled or just an app to help pay the tolling itself. Um, we're starting to see commercial apps too, you know, by McDonald's and all them. I really see them coming together into a common pay payment system actually multiple payment systems. So currently, we're looking at uh, the retail, as I said, like McDonald's and those, uh, the GPS enabled, uh, again, somebody in here is working on that, and individual single platforms where people are working on how do we best you know, collect, how do we best get this money, and how do we distribute it, especially when we're going into multiple areas. So in-vehicle payments, I touched on that a little bit. So you saw the video. How, how many people in here that actually, that, does that intrigue you? You like it? No. <laughs> okay. So some of the problems with it, though, with the car companies and everybody's worried about is privacy. You know, is it going to track me? That's more prominent on the government, government side when government's actually running that transaction. People worry about government tracking them. But if you have... Do you really worry about when you use Apple Pay or go out and charge something on Amazon? People don't worry about that as much. So moving to the private sector, I think, would actually not solve it, but decrease it a bunch. 
Um, connected vehicle is actually encouraging this to happen. It's actually because they're already putting all this electronic and software in the car. It's just another step. It's just another step. And they're, you know, Sirius XM is the one that put that video together. So they are providing services into the vehicle. They're looking at providing them and others video services into the back seat of that vehicle. So when you are autonomous and you go to movie mode, you know, and the car darkens and you can just watch a movie on the front windshield, you know, they're selling that service. But that wasn't enough. So now they need to actually extend that market into kind of a mobile payment. So, wait a minute, watch the enter button. Um, so benefits of going in vehicle or going private, you know, security. So currently, every toll agency has pretty much developed this whole system and what they have by themselves. There's a couple companies within the toll groups that put stuff together and uh, put together, but now we're exchanging information on a national basis and soon to be uh, kind of international with North America. So security level, um, on the tag for one, the transponder or phone app or whatever is important. And then on the back side. So most agencies run their own back office currently. Uh, there is a couple bids coming out, including EasyPass bid to actually handle the interoperability side, um, which will open that up. So on that the tags with the information they hold now is the customer information, obviously, credit card and uh, um, your license plate number, because we do capture the license plate number if the tag doesn't read. So security, um, it also discrete, uh, decreased uh, distractions. You know, currently, if it's a phone app, you might have to work with the app. If it's built into the car, although I have a Tesla, and I'm not sure it's less distraction going to the center screen to do the GPS or anything or more. So, but it, it should be all integrated into vehicle and actually be less distractive. Um, Opt-in payments, again, you have the option of turning it off. Right now, you'd have to take the transponder down, put it in the right protect envelope, and, and in order not to, to pay that way. Um, the big news is it would be supportive of a lot of other mobile payment systems. So you'd be able to cross market. You buy a hamburger, at, two hamburgers at McDonald's, and you get a free toll or whatever, or vice versa. You'd be able to cross market between different segments of the payment system. We're seeing a generational shift. Um, we're seeing, you know, kid, uh, people coming out of college today, you know, wanting the tech. They're more tech savvy than any generation we've ever seen. And they want the convenience. It's funny when I helped do EasyPass, put EasyPass up initially. And we didn't do it for anything that was saving the world or anything like that. We did it because we're afraid that toll systems would go out of existence in the New York area. Traffic was backing up daily. It was getting terrible, nightmares. You were spending half hour, 45 minutes getting across into New York City. We had all kinds of engineering projections about, oh, you can't increase traffic because, you know, it gets to the other side, it'll just bottleneck in the city. So we, we opened anyway. No bottlenecks. People actually adjusted their schedules in order to work easy pass to make it work better and just go through the, the uh, toll booths without, um, without stopping. So afterwards, I got a call from a young lady and I'm thinking, wow, this actually kind of worked, which was a little bit of a surprise. Um, and she said, I, ju I just want to thank somebody. And I was like, for what? And she said, you put 45 minutes back in my day Every day that I spend with my kids, I'm a single mom. You know, so it, that part made me feel good. Now, she's paying for it <laughs> through the toll, but, you know, uh, it's only going to get worse because somehow we have to finance the infrastructure. Um, you know, so the new generation, cashless, you know, even my generation now, nobody carries that much cash or, at all. You know, it's all cashless. Immediate response, you know, Get it now, see it now. So it gives you all that, that stuff. It shifts our expectations and priorities. Um, you can just drive through. You don't have to stop and talk to the collector on the way to Howard Johnson's. 
So where's the future? You know, we talked about tools. So, like it or not, and I'm not a fan of tools all the time. You know, it's a tool in the toolbox. It's not the answer to everything. But how do you pay for the infrastructure? So you're looking at traffic's only getting worse in the major cities, New York, Philadelphia, Los Angeles. They're all looking at cord and pricing, which is basically putting a ring of tolls around the city or a section of the city. And you can't get in or out without paying for it, you know, because they have to fund transit. Because the problem with transit is you can get federal funds to build it, but people don't want to pay enough to, to maintain it. So the fares that you're getting charged in transit in order to attract people to use transit are too low to actually pay the operations cost. So it, it's been a real problem. So tolling, like the tolls in New York City that everybody complains about, about if you look at MTA bridges and tunnels, um, about two thirds of what they collect go to pay for transit. So you're starting to see something called mobility as a service, where everything's coming together on the transportation side. It's you know, mass transit, access control, everything. So everything's on the one particular platform as we move forward. As I talked about security, so the security of the system right now is a plus and a minus, so it's on both slides. Um, it's a minus on the other slide because we're not really there. And it's a plus because if we do something like this and every companies like that you represent get involved in this, you know, we will have more security. When you start working on the retail side, it's different than just on the government side or quasi-government side. So it, it will actually, I think, enhance our security. The opt-in, I said, so you may be able to drive down the road and not have a transponder in the car or have it turned on or off, you know, easily by the dashboard or a switch on the, on the phone or whatever. Or you may be able to just call in or text, who can't text and drive, but <laughs> text to turn it on for that particular toll road. So um, software integration is going to be a challenge, right? Trust me, we did Easy Pass with three states, seven agencies in how many years uh, to actually make it happen. And it's not so much the technology side, although that was tough. Um, we actually, the technology we borrowed from uh, the federal government, they had it to track troops out of Los, Al Los Alamos. It's the business rules. How do we collect? Who holds the float? Right? How often do we have to pay each other? You know? So th that's the problem. You know, all the little business rules like that. How do you treat your customer be you know, besides how you treat mine across state lines? So how do you collect all that? Um, so multi-agency agreements have been really difficult, especially when it comes to collection across state lines. So if you're going toll road to toll road, a state in Maryland to Virginia, it's maybe not to be as bad, but if you're going to a state that doesn't have tolls, like Tennessee, why do they have, what's the advantage they have in forcing your toll by holding somebody's registration? It's a political you know, nightmare, really. Um, so that's the interstate enforcement side. So I mentioned mobility as a service. The last mile. I talked to a couple of people, they've been to a couple of conferences that talked about it. We're looking at how to actually get go that last mile, how to make sure people get you know, all the service they need. I wanted to take the last five minutes to actually answer any questions. I'm much better interactive than I am just, I hate talking suits, you know, <laughs> and uh, just, you know, Going like that. Anybody? Any questions? Comments? Yeah, and I actually testified before Congress on that a couple years ago, and it had some, some motion at the time. Um, if anybody has never done that, don't ever volunteer. But, <laughs> um, but 
okay, the question was, what's happening internationally? Can we gain any lessons from that? Um, the answer is yes, but it's different. A lot of the international, over in Europe, the banking systems are owned by government or run by government. The license plates themselves are easier to read on the license plate recognition side. You know, we have a lot of vanity plates, so we're working on that. We worked on nationally to come up, you'll see the license plate is two thirds. This number in the, the tennis or whatever is on the left side. So um, we're working on that. But a lot of the companies that are in the US are, are from overseas. Uh, Japan, I talked to, there's a car maker now that's doing a pilot there. You probably know. And um, uh, Japan is ahead of us on the toll side. Uh, but again, they have more government, international government, you know, national government support. Our Congress is reluctant to get involved on that side because of the state sovereignty when it comes to license plates. So they won't, they won't do that. Anybody else? Nope, up there. I didn't hear the women the discount though. I never heard that. <laughs> When you think about, it seems like there's a lot of potential players involved in, you know, you have the auto manufacturers, you showed Sirius, and, uh, and then you think about the, in, and then you think about the in-car systems today, and um, uh, Apple's car system, Android's uh, car system, is one of the biggest challenges you have right now that it's just sort of wide, like we've had a couple of the um, auto manufacturers contact us as they're doing their sort of due diligence and they're looking, about, uh, looking at putting um, payments into cars, but like, who, who's the right owner? As, as an individual, do I feel more affiliation to my automobile, to Google Pay, to some third party service like Sirius that might be in my car? Like it seems like there's still a long, like even who the ultimate winner is or who, who the chip should be put on seems really wide open at this stage and be a big impediment and a like, lot, of, lot of duplication uh, and before you could even get to the point where you could think about doing really your, some of the things you're talking about up here. I agree and it goes back to the, you know, the actual agreements. I personally think it will be whoever holds the account, you know, whether it's a, a bank or whatever. The car companies, from what I talk, don't really want to do that part. They want to have the, the ability to ha have it in the car. And now the toll agencies have kind of, not officially, but they've gone to 6C technology. Everybody's putting multi-protocol readers in in 6C. So that part is kind of solved. Um, but I think whoever comes up, I think there'll be multiple, by the way. So currently, EasyPass is bidding a hub. Um, Texas has a hub. Ford is putting a hub up, and California is putting a hub up. I think eventually they'll be farmed out to whoever. It's kind of the Wild West at the, at the moment, but I think uh, they'll be, that will, that's what will happen. And I think that's better for the public and that's better for the industry. It keeps uh, comp competition going. So uh, with that, time's up. I want to thank you for inviting me and thank you for listening. I know tolls aren't really the optimal subject here, <laughs> but uh, thanks again.